Good morning, y'all. Went ahead and made breakfast. Didn't film it because it's the same breakfast from last time. We got the yerba. And we are staying at my private spa and fitness resort. Right here. Special for the homeless fishermen. Look at that setup. Woo! This is my parking lot, boy. Ain't that right, Archie? This is our parking lot. I'm sitting here chilling. Ate my breakfast. Deciding what to what to go fish today. Um, I think we're gonna go after some snakeheads. Um, of course, there's all kinds of random stuff in these ponds, but snakeheads are really cool. And I caught my first one the other day with Kyle. Um, so I want to go see if I can catch a bigger one, maybe. So I'm about to tie up a leader. I did a whole video on my leaders and lines and stuff like that on Patreon. So if you want to check that out, you can. We're about to tie this horrid FG knot. I love doing this stuff, but yeah, we're going to tie this up. We got 65 pound braid, or no, 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 this is 50 pound braid. We got 50 pound braid, 20 pound mono. Should be plenty, I think. I don't know. I'm not too good at this yet, but yeah, we're going to go try that out. Right. I don't know how many wraps to do. I don't. I do like. I don't know till it just looks. Till it looks good. <laughs> I think between 16 and 20 is where I go. I don't know. Somebody. Somebody will probably tell you that's too many. It holds. Got some pretty big snook on this earlier, so they held. Cool. Get it all tied up. And then cinch it. Cinching it's a little harder. I usually like to tie it around something to cinch it. I usually just do like a million wraps around this uh, little post on my bed so I can cinch it. And you just pull on it super hard. Because if you don't do this, the braid will practically cut your hand off, which is super cool. And I need that hand to feed Archie, so can't can't be doing that. All right, got our leader all tied up. Uh, I just tied on this unique, uh, this is the baby G trout, it is 6 inches long and it's pretty dope. Uh, 6 aught beast hook, I think this will catch us a big snakehead. There's also some big bass in these ponds so who knows, 50 pound braid to 20 pound mono to the G trout. So let's go see if we can catch one. Okay, pull up to the spot, we're going to bring frog just in case, we got the wake walker, the Guadalupe pattern. Uh, we have these G-Crack Spiron Twins. These are little curly tail versions. And I have a beast hook for that. And then we got one more unique baby G-Trout. Just kind of packing light here. Gonna throw on the chest seat and see if we can't catch anything. looks like one of those we're gonna get kicked out kind of days but oh well Oh, there's one. Missed him. Come on, you little bastard. All right, we missed one snakehead and then it started raining. So I was like, okay, screw it. I wasn't really feeling this pond. It, it looks like there are fish in it and I know there's peacocks and snakeheads and stuff, but just just wasn't happening today, you know? Um, so we are about to drive to the next pond, not too far away. 
but uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is just me, right? But I've been thinking about this. People in Florida drive crazy. Now, now no, like, no offense to you guys. I, I, I love it down here, and you guys are cool. But my God, there are like no rule, no rules on the road here. In Texas, it's kind of like uh, if you drive in the right lane, you're going slow. You're going the speed limit, right? And if you drive in the left lane, you're going 120. There's no, you know, there's no arguing that, right? That's just like the the law. It's like an unspoken rule, you know. So I I, I have a big ass van. I drive slow, so I'm driving in the right lane all the time, you know. And as long as you're driving in the, in the far right, nobody's gonna mess with you in Texas. That's just kind of how it goes. It's like, oh, okay, he's in the right lane. This guy's slow, cool, you know. And 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 if you're driving fast, you're driving the left lane. So nobody's nobody's uh you know stepping on each other's toes, right? But here. I feel like there's no fucking rules. Everybody just drives around all, all over the place. I try and like stay in the right lane, you know, I try and stay out of everybody's way because I'm not driving 80 plus miles an hour, right? But I feel like I still have people fly up on my ass and turn their brights on and fly around me. I'm like, dude, I'm going, I'm going the speed limit in the right lane, buddy. I'm in, I'm in a big ass fucking van. Like, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but that that's how, maybe I'm just a terrible driver. You know, I mean, talking to the camera while driving, it would probably be considered terrible driver status, but you know, whatever, right? I don't know, let's get to the next pond. All right, last time I fished this pond, the bass are eating glide bait's pretty good, so we're gonna be throwing the retro glide. Look at that, snook pattern. Kyle always does a wonderful job on the paint jobs. And these sharks, look at that, super sticky, stuck in my hand, there we go. <laughs> That's gonna get bit. We're gonna catch a fish on this right now. <laughs> Huge snakehead right there. Massive snakehead. Oh my god, that was a giant snakehead. Wow. Dude, I should have thrown something else at him. Holy cow. There's another huge one right there. An even bigger one. <gasps> Dude, that was like a 10 pound snakehead. Holy cow. Wow. That was the fucking Mac Daddy snakehead. That was sick. <laughs> nice. All right. Get up here. Oh no! No! Oh, shit. Sorry, bud. My God. <laughs> that was crazy. Bet me out, of course. Just got one point. Wow. That was nuts. First bite on the retro glide. I'm over it, dude. All right. Good night, Archie. Time for you to go to bed, old boy. Oh my God! Fish aren't even real. There aren't even fish in the world. I fished like 20 ponds a day that all had big snakeheads in them and uh, didn't even catch one. Had a couple little bites. Um, that kind of sucked. So now we're gonna go run around and look for critters. I got the I got the beam. Boom! Holy shit! I'm gonna destroy my camera lens. I got the beam. We're gonna go look for a python. Would be nice. That would be the coolest find. But uh, I don't know. Let's go look. All right, here we are. Out uh, out in the glades. We're gonna just kind of walk down this dirt road I might run off to the side and look and there's like trails and stuff but usually usually you can find snakes crossing the dirt road 
early in the night because it's usually still pretty warm from the sunshine. There wasn't too much sun out today, but hey, who knows? I'm gonna run around, see if we can't find anything. Mr. Gator, first critter of the night. He, uh, I don't know, he probably can't even see me because I'm, I'm blinding the shit out of him, but whatever. Mr. Gator. Good size one right there, hiding from me underwater. Oh, there she goes, off into the to the abyss. <laughs> A little freaky. Look at this peacock bass. He's got something wrong with him. <laughs> I feel like I could grab him. Touch him with my toes. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> okay, he was not dead. He was just sleeping, I guess. Weird. All right, y'all. Uh, we didn't find the the python or chameleon or anything really that interesting. A couple of big gators. That was pretty neat. Um, now we are back at my private fitness sport resort, resort spa whatever, Planet Fitness, right? And uh, here, I'm just gonna show you guys something. All right, so, you see that? Y'all see that? Y'all see that golden arch right there? The old Mickey D's. Let me just tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something about Mickey D's. I'm fighting fast food demons right now. I want, I want to make chicken so bad, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm making, I'm cooking right now, right? Let me show you, All right? We're we're getting the broccoli started. Gonna boil the broccoli. Got the uh, got the rice. We're gonna make chicken fried rice. Okay, it's gonna be a good healthy meal. It's also gonna be super duper cheap. It's not gonna cost me like ten dollars. It's gonna be like a little like a five dollar meal, right? But I want that I want that McDonald's so bad. But it's it's not it's not in my budget right now. So I'm not gonna do it. So if you're if you're you're home right now and you're hovering over the DoorDash button don't don't do it come on get up get up go to the kitchen make something good for yourself you, you'll you'll appreciate it later right I don't I don't want to do this right now this is the last thing I want to do is sit here in the parking lot and cook you know it's, it's a pain in the ass I gotta pull out all my stuff I gotta get the stuff I'm sitting here police are driving around looking at me all weird you know like well, what are you doing what are you doing in the parking lot boy but but I'm gonna do it because it's good for me so I just, I extend, I extend my understanding. If you're fighting, if you're fighting your demons, your fast food demons, me too, me too. But we're gonna, we're gonna beat them. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna boil this broccoli and I'm gonna show you guys how to make the rest of this meal. Very easy and simple. Um, it's like more steps than most of my meals, but it's yummy, super yummy. We're gonna throw, we're gonna throw it here. Let me give you the sauces, right? Soy sauce, okay, pretty basic. You probably have that in your cupboard. Um, a little bit of sesame oil, just a tiny, tiny bit goes a really long way. And then orange sauce, orange chicken, baby. The sauce really makes it. Having a nice variety of sauces is, is good, so you don't get too bored, you know what I mean? You can change up the sauces a little bit. Um, yeah, that's what we're making. All right, boom, the broccoli's done boiling. Now we're gonna take one cup of water, and our instant rice, boom. Put that in there, and then you kind of stir it up a little bit. Make sure it's all even. And then, we're gonna let that sit for, I don't know, the duration it takes to make the chicken. You sit, let it sit, cover it, and then go ahead and season our chicken up and throw that on. For this dish, I just do salt and pepper on the chicken because we're gonna have so many other flavors on it as well. Um, if you had some sort of special seasoning plus the sauce, plus the sesame oil, plus the soy sauce, it would just kind of be like a, it would just be too much. So salt and pepper is fine. 
All right, once the chicken's done, then you pull your rice out. I put a whole bunch of butter in the bottom of the pan, and then soy sauce. Um, I don't know, you kind of need a lot. Not like a, a ton, but enough. And then you kind of give it the old, the old chef's kiss, chef flip here. Chefing it up. Boom. Uh, I usually keep the burner pretty hot and just move it around a lot. Sometimes I'll use the stir, sometimes I'll flip it. Um, and then once that's done, you add everything else and throw the sesame oil in there and your sauce and boom, that's it. Chicken fried rice. Look at that. Ah, she's ready. Good stuff. I was doing some math for you guys um, while this is cooling down. And the total cost of this meal, this bowl right here is $2.34. Uh, a quarter of this broccoli, 57 cents. And then one of these chicken breasts, $1.17. And then one cup of this rice is about 60 cents. That is the total cost. So I forgot who said it the other day. Somebody told me, they were like, oh, it's just, it's ex too expensive to eat healthy. And I was like, no, it's not. Like you're just not buying, you're just not buying the right stuff. So you guys look at that, two thirty-four for broccoli, chicken, and rice, and then the soy sauce and stuff. You're only using so much, so so you can round it up. What round it up to like three bucks if you really want to. Um, it's probably more like two fifty just because of what I'm using, but you get the point. Under three dollars for a nice healthy meal like that. It is. Uh, it's pretty cheap to eat healthy as long as you know what you're buying. Whoo. That was good. I also got a question from Mr. Clinton Burning, the BFS master. Um, he asked how I clean up. I clean up with Dawn dish soap, a little bit of water, and a lot of paper towels. That's uh, pretty much the only way. I guess I could use a rag, but that's just like super messy and whatever. So I think my carbon footprint is small enough where I have a pass to use paper towels. Look at that shit. Look at those hooks. Whoo! Got those owner singles on there. All right. Tomorrow, I'm not fucking around. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna get me a snakehead or a peacock or something. I'm changing up the strat a little bit. We're gonna go back to the basics. I got a, a lipless crankbait. Put the single hooks on there so we can really give them the juice. Got a crazy colored jerk bait. These are both uh, Duo Realis. Very sick. And then we got the floating type elastomer, Imokimushi 60. This is like perfect for a snakehead. I'm imagining like just putting this on like a weightless hook and just dipping it right in front of them. And I think, uh, I think that'll work. I don't, I mean, I don't know, obviously. Today it didn't work. I think, I, I think all my baits were just too big. So we're gonna downsize a little bit and I don't know. We're gonna find out, we're gonna find out. But you guys, Please go check out the Patreon. It really uh, it helps me support the channel, um, helps me make more chicken fried rice in the van, and then you can get a whole bunch of content on there. There's like 100 videos on there that you can go watch um, right now if you sign up. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you guys for watching.